sandstone. I love you so much. Oh, Brook Basalt, I feel the same. Oh, uh, <laughs> hey there, rock stars. <laughs> uh, uh, you ever wondered what it would be like to date a rock? Yeah, um, <laughs> me neither. <laughs> but actually, uh, geological dating is an actual technique that's used by geologists, paleontologists, and even anthropologists. Geological dating is simply determining the date that that rock was formed. And uh, scientists will do that in one of two different ways, either through relative dating or absolute dating. So, uh, relative dating is when rocks date their relatives. Okay, but seriously, um, relative dating is determining the relative age of the rock based on the ages of the rocks around it. Relative dating is um, going to give us an idea, a range of when that rock's age might be, but it won't give us an actual numerical value. For example, let's say we have uh, three different kinds of rocks. We have this limestone that was deposited first in a shallow sea. Next, we have this sandstone here. Ugh. Sammy sandstone that was deposited when the ocean started to recede. And um, as that ocean receded, it deposited the sandstone layer here. And then lastly, we have brook basalt. Brook basalt was deposited as a part of a volcanic eruption. And so we have this um, three layer rock uh, formation here. Um, but the age of, let's say we know the age of brook basalt on the top and the limestone on the bottom, but we don't know the middle age. We don't know the age of Sammy sandstone there. And that's where relative dating comes in. Because if we know the age of the basalt and we know the age of the limestone, then we know that the sandstone had to have been deposited between those two ages. Uh, it's again going to give us a relative idea of when these two rocks, are, of when the sandstone was deposited, but we're not going to get an actual numerical value for when the rock was put down. And you can also use fossils to help determine a rock's relative age. For example, by using something called a index fossil, you can find out a lot about the certain age of a rock. Um, you have this ah, ammonite here. Whoop, there we go, there's a good shot. This ammonite was laid down sometime in the Mesozoic area, era, excuse me. And uh, we know that because there's a really good fossil record for ammonites. Through the fossil record, we know that ammonites lived within about 419 to about 66 million years ago. So if you have a rock, gosh, darn it, I just, uh, goodness. So if you have a rock that has an ammonite in it, then you know that that rock is within that certain age range, which again, doesn't give us a direct, holy crap stacks. <laughs> oh no. Absolute dating, on the other hand, uses a different set of techniques that gives scientists a direct numerical value for the age of that rock for when it was formed. Most of the time, this process is going to involve radiometric dating. Radiometric dating is the process of measuring the rate of um, radioactive decay of an element in a rock or in a um, naturally occurring material over time. And this is very commonly used not only in geology and paleontology, but also in anthropology as well. Basically how it works is a naturally occurring radioactive elements will slowly decay from a parent atom down to a daughter atom as it goes from an unstable state to a more stable um, configuration for that atom. Scientists can go through and measure the proportions from daughter to um, parent atom and find out with very high accuracy how old 
that um, process has been and through extension how old that rock is which is really cool for example a very commonly used um, isotope is carbon 40 especially for anthropology uh, because carbon will carbon 40 will slowly um, degrade over time to a more stable form of carbon now because the half-life of carbon 40 decay is about 5,000 years or so it's not as good as other elements for um, very long-term dating. It's only good for about 40,000 years or so. But so if you need to take things older than that, what a lot of scientists and a lot of geologists will use is uh, uranium to lead dating. There are certain configurations, certain um, isotopes of uranium that will um, degrade in some cases for such a long time that the half-life is 4.5 billion years which is crazy so we can use all kinds of different isotopes and all kinds of different studies to find out how old a rock is absolutely you can get a definite definite answer there it can be kind of tricky though because you cannot date a sedimentary rock and get an absolute answer there are certain techniques but if you're using radiometric dating, it isn't going to work on a sedimentary rock at all. And here's, here's the cool reason, here's the cool reason why, is because the sedimentary rock is made up of all different kinds of pieces of other rocks. So you don't know if the element that you're looking at, um, the atom that you're measuring for the radiometric dating, what parent rock it came from. It could have come from a piece of granite that's over millions of years older than that sandstone is, or it could have come from a different volcanic rock or a metamorphic rock or a different sedimentary rock entirely. So um, for uh, sedimentary rocks, you need to use different methods. And for the most part, the most common means of um, measuring the dates of a sedimentary rock is to get a bracketing where you can have some kind of an igneous rock um, like a, an ash bed from a volcanic eruption on top of and below a sedimentary feature and then you can kind of bracket and figure out how old that sedimentary rock is, which is pretty cool. So there you have it, rock stars. Geological dating is something that all geologists are intimately familiar with. Thanks so much for watching the video, rock stars. Let me know what your favorite part was. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please drop them in the comments section. Let me know um, what you liked and what you'd like to see next as always I do want you to know that I read all of your comments love to hear from you and that I am slowly working through all of the great suggestions you've left me it's just that the weather has been kind of iffy lately and I want to make sure that um, when I'm able to go outside that we can get you some awesome awesome footage of some cool geology out there so look forward to that and if you haven't already please be sure to smash that subscribe button check you next time Whoops. Oh. Oh, Brooke Basalt, I love you so much. Oh. <laughs> Stevie Sandstone, I feel the same. Was it, was it Stevie? I can't remember. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Match made in heaven. <laughs>